YouTube. Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Full Official Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, another day, another dollar. The Florida series continues. And today, I kind of decided to make a sketchy move down here in the Sunshine State. Now, what exactly do I mean by that, right? This fishing spot that you guys see over here is another portion of the intracoastal waterway that is a little bit north of the area where I shot the previous YouTube videos here on the channel. Over the years, I've come to this place maybe two times before in my whole life. And both times that I fish here, I kind of failed miserably. I didn't catch any new species. Um, nothing too excited happened, right? And thus, the sketchy decision, right? Today, in this video, man, I, I've decided to give this spot a third chance, you know? You know what they say, right? They say that the third time is the charm, right? So, beautiful area, as you guys can see, in the intracoastal waterway, right? There's a little inlet outlet right on this side over here. The bottom over here is mainly coral reefs with sand out there. So, I mean, I don't know, folks. I, I told you guys in a previous video here on the YouTube channel that fishing is like gambling, right? And today, I kind of decided to gamble. The main objective of today is to further explore this fishing spot. I'm going to be fishing here the entire day, uh, casting out, you know, around the walls, trying for new species of fish for the life list. And I would really, really love to catch something a little bit exotic or new to the life list. Let me get my gear together. And boy, pray with me, ladies and gentlemen, as you watch this video for something good to happen, all right? There we have it, huh? Two tiny pieces of cut bait on a size 3 Gamakatsu rod. I just got the first rod of the day all set up. As you guys can see, a Carolina rig with a very long leader and tiny little pieces of cut bait, right? I'm just going to cast this rod right in the middle of the intracoastal waterway. You want exotic species, sometimes you will catch them on a chunky piece of cut bait the depth is actually pretty okay see this is one other thing that i really like about this particular fishing spot okay check that out Ooh, it's got fishing holders fishing rod holders for you ready to use right not to mention another factor that made me choose this particular spot today is this over here okay i actually got shade from today it is brutal down here in florida you know it's like 80 degrees fahrenheit and when you fish a lot day after day down here in florida you know you want a little bit of shade because even when you put sunscreen on your body the sun really really takes a toll and finally one last thing that you guys may have noticed already on the YouTube channels recently, right? From all the previous videos, I've been choosing fishing spots where there's really nobody around, right? I mean, this particular spot, for example, it is 100% solitude, okay? Check that out. There is absolutely nobody in this park, okay? It may not be the most enticing fishing spot for you to fish at, but in terms of COVID-19 pandemic, I don't need to use a mask, you know, it is mitigation 100%. You guys know, right, for this fishing trip, I didn't even come down here by plane, man. I took the train, 25 hours on Amtrak, right? Which, by the way, big shout out to Amtrak for enforcing a strict social distancing rules and regulations, right? It felt safe and comfortable for all 25 hours of the trip. But anyways, enough ranting in this video. First rod is in the water. I'm gonna set up a second rod, ultra light now for multi-species around the wall. And boy, I hope we catch something new for the life list. All right, let's check what's around the wall over here. Usually there are some reef species right around this area. At first glance, it looks pretty dead. Oh. Oh yeah, I think we're going to get our day started with some Sergeant Major. I see them down there. Alright, let's catch one of them just to say that I caught one. 
during this fishing trip sergeant major one of the most common reef species around the area there we go all right one sergeant major coming up the abu def duf saxatilis right uh, a lot of people take this fish to be noisance species but i tell you what where there is sergeant major usually there are other reef species the sergeant major is one of the most common species of fish down here in florida when it comes to coral reefs like i just emphasized a lot of anglers find them to be nuisances right and i find them to be nuisances as well but i tell you what the thing with them like i just emphasized is that often where you find sergeant majors you tend to find other reef species right so as the tide moves today hopefully some parrot fish or some other exotic species of fish are going to show up right in front of this wall so that actually is a good sign for us i tell you all what you see this little tree over here i see a bunch of other tiny tiny species down there that are not sergeant major and i'm actually not sure what they are so it's worth pursuing Oh yeah, oh yeah, take it, take it bro, take it. Little fish took it, chewing on it. Gone, gone boy. Hey, little fish master. Talk about exotics, huh? <laughs> I guess people don't enjoy catching these a lot, but for me, ah, hell yeah, good cut bait. Let me give you all an update of what has happened thus far. As you guys saw in this video, I just got this beautiful, well, this was a houndfish just now, the Tilosurus crocodilus, right? But now, it is just plain cut bait. I just decapitated the hell out of it, right? I'm actually running out of cut bait on the cut bait rod. I was using a little cotton hippos, right? The Creval Jack as cut bait. And man, I caught so many puffers on that rod, mainly southern puffers, the Sphoiroides nephilus. And that's why this guy <laughs> right over here, you know, just met his demise, you know. I've been micro fishing with the little rod too, and I mean, don't take me wrong, the multi species has been top of the crop. I landed a bunch of sailors grunt, the Hyamolon Paha, landed a few spot tail pinkfish, right, the Diplodus. Hobro, okay. I even counted in Caesars, right? Just to make sure that the fish was not the South American silver porgy, which is a very similar species, the Diplodus argenteus. And I caught a few little gray snapper, the mangrove snapper, aka the Lutianus griseus. So far, a bunch of different species, but nothing new yet. As the tide keeps moving over here, I am really hoping that something exotic or exciting is going to happen. This life listing videos, man, ladies and gentlemen, is always like this, right? We just keep on grinding and grinding and grinding until, man, we hit jackpot. You know that sooner or later, maybe in this video, maybe in a future video, things are going to happen. Big things are going to happen. I have to say, things are not looking too good over here that rod over there the cut bait very very quiet son very very quiet i've been running my inline spinner especially around this opening area over here and i lost two needle fish on the inline <laughs> spinner i guess the most exotic stuff that is being around is really the needle fish you know so for now i guess we're gonna play with them for a little bit until something more exotic shows up needle fish 101 with epf if you ever go out there and you see some needle fish is women on top of the water all you need to do is one hook 
whatever size you feel like it with one piece of bait anything really squid shrimp cut bait man little fish are not picky they will take anything now in terms of pound test line and this is important make sure that you use a pound test line that the fish can cut your line epf is using four pounds test line not recommended but epf is a trained needle fish professional so for me it's okay you know folks there is really no secret when it comes to needle fish look there's one down there i don't know if you guys can see it or not without the polarized lenses all you need to do is throw your bait keep your bail open let the fish take it the fish already took it fish already took it as soon as you see your bait disappear oh you said hook man but i lost that one i lost that one but look it did not take my hook i just wanted to show you guys right it did not take my hook all right we just put another piece of bait on and repeat boy this fish think this is free buffet right here let me tell you all something it's time to teach them lesson there's no thing such as a free buffet bro the shrimp is expensive shrimp too man taco shop didn't have shrimp so i bought this at publix you know this is this is gourmet shrimp dude that human beings eat you know what i'm saying man boy that little fish is coming up hey look at that sucker sucker took a piece of shrimp he's right back look at that unbelievable that's right run with it soon as the bait disappears soon as the bait disappears set the hook boy set the hook son oh yeah boy Ooh, that jump boy Ooh, come up here man you think that's free buffet huh you think that's free buffet huh let me tell you something my man there is no such thing as a, as a free buffet all right you go in there in the live oh you want to jump out huh ain't gonna happen man not on my watch go to live well boy not going to lie ladies and gentlemen took me a little while <laughs> to put this fish in the live well fish was like jumping like crazy out of it you know there are two reasons why anglers don't really like to catch any type of needle fish down in florida although they do fight really good and they jump like crazy the first reason is that you know when you land them they are really hard to handle you know they jump around right and the second reason which is related to the first reason that i'm going to show you right now is the teeth on these fellas man they got like they're like the gar of the ocean you know what i'm saying they got this little sharp teeth man that is not very pleasant you know so you got to be careful with these guys man when they turn on you boy this thing's more dangerous than crocodiles all right no i'm just exaggerating okay they're not more dangerous than crocodiles all right they are pretty harmful if you just get a good grip on them all right get it oh easy <laughs> get a good grip on them so that they can get you with that set of teeth you see that set of teeth right there ain't, ain't a joke this guy you know all right i'm gonna release this one i'm gonna put this one back this one has been the live well look how live it is huh man look at the teeth man oh my goodness dude that's why i called in the gar of the ocean yeah back it goes well catching the needle fish is fun and everything but there is really no diversity when it comes to it you know it was all the hound needle fish the telosurus crocodilus so here's what i'm going to do right now i'm kind of changing strategies i got a size six hook i'm gonna put a piece of shrimp on with the skin and the tail as you guys can see i see some bigger species of fish together with the sergeant major is swimming down there i am almost positive that those are snappers but i don't know which species so the key idea here this is another lesson with epf when it comes to florida the key idea is that you put a hook that is a little bit bigger so that the sergeant major can't really get it and you create a feeding frenzy you see you throw it down there and you just let the sergeant major go with it because the shrimp has the skin they can't really get to it the snapper on the other hand can inhale a size six hook no problem whatsoever so you see what i'm getting at that's what you do you put it down there you let the sergeant major worker bait and then when the snapper comes and gets your stuff boy send it to heaven
Oh yeah, the snapper is definitely trying to get it. The snapper got it. Yeah, see, that's the game. Small snapper got it, but that's the game at least. That's the game, you see? What we got here, we got a little gray snapper, huh? I'm not gonna put it in the live well because I don't want people to think that I'm taking fish illegally. I'm just gonna wet my hands real quick and check it out, huh? We got ourselves here a little mangrove snapper. It has to be 10 inches to take in this type of waters down here in Florida. I tell you what, if I take, if I get one in this video that is like higher than 10 inches, boy, you know it's going to be dinner. I'm having difficulties on hooking the fish <laughs> with my damaged thumb. But, ah, that's Florida for you, man. Why did I cut myself with my own knife, huh? You know, I think I just saw like two great barracuda or something big and long cruise the waters right around here. Now, don't take me wrong, I love catching snappers and I would love to catch some dinner, you know? Just for you guys to have an idea, I caught a few more species while doing that. I got some pinfish, the Lagodon homboides, right? Even got a few schoolmaster snapper, the Lutianus apodus. But when you see them long fish start cruising, you know what time it is, folks. It is Mohara time. We're going to catch some live bait here and live line it. Try to find out if those are snook or not because I don't have the common snook on my life list yet. I just switched to a size 18 hook. I tell you what, we need to catch these Moharas fast, man, before these barracudas swim away. I see some Moharas right over here, tiny ones. The angle is going to be a little bit odd for you guys. I do apologize for that. Let's see if the Moharas come to bite. Oh yeah, there's a Mohara looking at the bait. Got it. That's it, man. When you were the Dink Master, Dink Master don't play, man. You know, Dink Master don't play. Give me a few seconds down there with a the size 18 hook boy. Moharas are going to start popping. And this right here, let me tell you, this is perfect bait for live lining for those barracudas. All right, it's time to do your job. Just hook a little bit below the dorsal fin. Beautiful, so that they can still swim. Remove the scales, so that you have an accurate hook set. And look for barracudas. Oh yeah, I think I see one. Barracuda saw it. Oh, barracuda got it, barracuda got it. Fish on. Fish on, barracuda, barracuda boy, barracuda. Oh hell yeah boy, a little mohara. Mmm, 30 pound test boy, you ain't going nowhere. Flip it, barracuda. I told you guys I was going to get the barracuda boy. Barracuda on the mohara, son. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Who's the balls now, huh? <laughs> I admit it ladies and gentlemen sometimes the fish handling here on this channel is not the best you know I mean I do what I can but that barracuda did take a pretty hard hit on the ground and I apologize for that but I've been giving it some water and I think the barracuda is okay we're going to do a release now easy all right we got here the great barracuda it's Firaena Barracuda. It is a species that I already have. Beautiful bit on a live Mohara. I'm going to very gently drop it over here. Boom, that fish should be all right. Oh man, it swam away super strong. All right, that is great. Cause I was a little bit terrified, you know, man. I don't want the fish to go belly up on me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the worst thing that can happen. I've been reviving it here in the live well. I put new water. I'm actually quite happy now that we switched. We, we did so many things in this video, you know? Needle fish, to snappers, to catch moharas, to catch barracuda, right? But that was the good decision. That was a good decision, you know what I'm saying? That was a very good decision. <sighs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, we may not have caught new species in this video today. Nothing new for the life list. But regardless, I think you all will agree with me that this spot today definitely redeem 
itself, right? The multi-species fishing was top of the crop, man. I just added two more species, you know, to the list today, right? The little moharas that I caught for bait. One of them was the silver mohara, the Eusinostomus argenteus. And the other one, the one that was a little bit deeper, was the silver jenny, the Eusinostomus gula. I really didn't keep track of how many species I caught throughout the day today. I just know that, you know, it was like more than five, so I am quite satisfied. I'm going to get something to eat right now, and I am going to fish a little bit more after that. But yeah, you know, I, I, I can't say that I regret coming here today, you know, especially that barracuda at the end of the video, right? The great barracuda, the Sfiraena barracuda, man, that kind of kind of made my day you know it may not have been like a giant black tip page style you know but it is always so cool when you formulate a plan right and the plan actually works just like we did in this video you know i went out for the needle fish i for formulated the plan right and i caught the needle fish i went out there with a plan for the snappers right and i caught the snappers and i did a plan for the great barracuda and caught the moharas and it worked this is this is you know this is a good day in my books right as a matter of fact let me tell you all a little something a little secret right tomorrow i'm actually going to the inlet around here i'm going to be targeting parrot fish you know all the different species of parrot fish you guys you guys have seen already on the youtube channel right and hopefully some new ones too and i tell you what the game plan for tomorrow is going to be the same game plan for today right the, the technique that i used for the snappers, I do the exact same thing for the parrot fish, you know? This is just our little secret, okay? All right, fellas, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Tight lines. I will see you all next time. Oh, guys, I feel like I see a real, real weird species of fish down there. Looks like, what is that, a sea robbie of some sort? Dude, let's try to catch it. Oh no, the fish was not interested in it. And kind of swam away a little bit. Definitely some type of sea robbie, man. Something really funky. Oh my god, I hate Sergeant Major. Oh no, 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 don't swim away. No, 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 no. Easy, 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 easy. Oh my god, where did it go? Oh, I see it, I see it. It's going right over there. It's coming this way. Oh no, it's gone. Ah, oh, I missed the opportunity. I guess we'll never find out what that was. That was weird, man. That was some kind of weird sea robbing that was just chilling right over here. Ah, oh, that's that sucks, man. I put a piece of shrimp at the end, you know, tried to entice it to bite. And then the sergeant majors came and swarmed it. Ah, I had no chance. I had no chance. This is, this is a sad day for, for life listing. <laughs> it's a sad day for life listing.